Right. So, I'll carefully uh, check with others and call them. Uh, yeah. We yeah. should start. We should start. Yeah. Anyway, the first few minutes is only recap. So let's start. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to this third session of uh, I Care for Worker Welfare. Um, it's a pilot with JLL. We are very happy to launch this and uh, we look forward to more participation from you all. Um, so going on, it will become more and more uh, discussion based. So um, we would request all of you uh, to participate more and to talk more. Um, so now let me start uh, um, sharing the presentation. Just a second. Can you see this? Can you see? Anita? Akila, not uh, your presentation is still loading. We are not able. I cannot say I think I see blank screen. Just um, it was not on the desktop. Is it? Just a second, yeah. Can you see? Can you all see? Yes, Akila, uh, I can see your presentation. Yeah. Um, thanks. Um, so uh, today's agenda, our didactic today will be on uh, construction workers' living conditions. But just for the next few minutes, let's just recap what happened uh, um, in session one also and session two. So session one was on leadership. Um, so can any one of you tell me what uh, what are the three aspects of a flexible leader? Okay. <laughs> so cognitive flexibility, um, emotional flexibility and dispositional. So a leader is a person who can, is not about the power, you can lead without title. So cognitive is about the vision you have, the strategy you have, the emotional is about your communication ability, empathy uh, to yeah, about empathy um, uh, towards yourself and especially towards the other uh, human being. And the dispositional uh, leadership aspect is more about the energy you bring in and the positivity you have towards any task. Um, then uh, we will go on to what uh, recapping the working conditions world over, which, which is what uh, we covered last time. Uh, before that, I would like to take a step back and talk about I Care for Worker Welfare Program. The intent is that we train you all, um, the JLL people, from the projects and the EHS team to become trainers, whereby you will uh, reach out welfare programs to the workers, and which uh, is our contention, conviction, belief, and experience is that it will lead to uh, productivity at site, overall well-being in workers and gender absenteeism also uh, uh, better health in workers. So how do we plan to do that? We plan to create awareness in you on the interlinking uh, between construction worker conditions, living conditions and welfare. And also giving you an outreach toolkit which the workers will benefit from you all. Already Sugeshir has started reaching out the program to workers and I hope more of you will start doing it over the coming weeks and you will reap the benefit for yourself. You can measure and monitor these uh, for yourself. It will become obvious as we go along. But the effectiveness of this program is only if you reach out to the workers, either through yourselves or through contractors. So, like I said, working conditions, living conditions and worker, uh, worker well-being are very much uh, directly 
they do impact worker mental health and the physical health and which is what leads to absenteeism worker productivity and attitude issues which all of you face at site so today we will focus on construction living conditions world over but before that let's recap on the working conditions uh, what we saw last week so we did a study of migrant workers conditions uh, based on the ituc um the we we saw that it is very uh, the industry is very much dependent on migrant workers but they are uh, flexible and an expendable workforce uh, the most the conditions make it such that migrants are very vulnerable uh, and because they are extremely uh, reliant on the employers uh, especially those uh, are who are international migrants the subcontracting is a huge practice though it leads to flexibility does not lead to uh, voice for the workers and uh, the safety uh, falls in the gaps the accountability for safety uh, the, there is a lot of informality in the sector and uh, this creates uh, makes them even more vulnerable to hiring firing uh, not getting any benefits no career growth and these are all the barriers to um, safe work uh the, there is wage theft wage withholding extraction of fees uh, and uh, and ex worker exploitation and they are extremely vulnerable and in many countries like in north uh, africa africa north america uh, mexico and all that even middle east um there is a lot of trafficking and bonded labor and uh, we also saw that informal recruitment channels are a key barrier to fair decent and safe work for migrants uh we also saw uh, that safety has become a priority uh, in on on law on paper what we saw 20 years ago is very different at least uh, uh, on law on paper and in spirit also in many of the top companies um, uh, that safety is taken very seriously and our hope prayer and wish is that the living conditions and working conditions become on par uh, to safety um on law and in spirit also but we also see that uh, there is still a lot of worker deaths uh, there is a lot more which, which we need to do on the working conditions so now um let us uh, uh, would anyone of you have any questions on the working conditions or on uh, leadership i'm not expert but on working conditions definitely we can probably input if anybody has any questions you can ask now anyone no uh, okay so let's move on to uh, um, the didactic for uh, today's uh, didactic which is uh, living conditions so the next 20 minutes because it's living conditions need no explanation we will be using a lot of pictures uh, to run you through and before that we will we have compiled uh, 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 various uh, country standards on livability um, uh, what the government has uh, stipulated area per person volume per person what is safety all about how should the living conditions be if you provide bedding what is it what is the living area what is the kitchen area what is fire safety rules so this has been compiled i will run you through a bit in detail like i said last time this presentation has a lot of information we will be putting it on a common folder which you can refer to later also so a uh, guideline so what we did this time was uh, take the ilo standards and uh, also um, this uh, european bank for redevelopment and international finance corporation have mentioned for all these world bank projects and bigger projects so this is the uh, standard which they have mentioned we took it from there and we took a few countries like malaysia singapore india and uae and uh, we will see how india is it's very interesting to see what the other countries have stipulated as a law and what india has um, stipulated for with respect this is only with respect to the living conditions not with respect to the working conditions um, so uh, there is uh, a lot of if you see uh, many of them do talk about what is the minimum height 2 meter height the ilo standards say um if you uh, if you take say malaysia it's 2.4 meters headroom in the in the in the in the room for them 
so they they also talk about many of them talk about male and female accommodation should be separate uh, uh, i'm i'm happy to say that some of them have specified separate beds for workers because in some of our uh, projects we have seen at peak conditions uh, they bring in more workers and even two men share a bed uh, so they have mentioned separate bed ilo mentioned separate bed almost all of them have banned uh, uh, three bunk beds and some of them have specified and given uh, importance to privacy like even ikea we will see later that privacy for people is important um, they have even specified uh, bed dimensions like it should be 0.7 by 2 or 0.8 by 1.98 and so on um, and Oh, many of them because the vermin or bed bugs is a problem they even talk about maintenance we didn't add points on maintenance most of them have said whatever has been provided has to be maintained properly um ifc is one that for world bank uh, or any uh, financed by ebrd or whatever uh, those are big projects they have mentioned what is the cubic meter per person air volume per person and uh, area per person is something 4 to 5.5 square meter per person um and they have also mentioned that don't pack workers in a room overcrowding has to be avoided you have to put in uh, not more than eight workers per room ideally two workers per room um ifc has very specifically mentioned what is the storage area per person uh, is what they have mentioned so in malaysia interestingly we will go through a case study in detail in malaysia little bit of history what it was uh, what it is currently and 2018 they brought in laws the government has brought in a very beautiful document so a summary of this is 3 square meter per person malaysia has referred to uae a lot and avoiding triple beds uh, triple bunk beds rather uh, 2.4 meter headroom and they have mentioned bedding if provided uh, should be even 4 inch thick mattress and should be cleaned regularly uh, they have just mentioned there should be storage facility many of them have specified there should be no cooking inside the room and there is a huge fine if workers are made to stay in unsafe or um, non accommodation areas which is a good point which malaysia has brought in because some of our experience again there are families or cooks and their families and small children living inside the kitchen in the projects which we have been involved in we brought in the rule that this and they have made it a part of their uh, rules also going forward singapore incidentally talks about different types of accommodation which is more the reality that can be purpose built dorm, uh, dormitories which are run by private uh, uh, operators in the outskirts of the city for a fee the contractor rents it out for his workers and arranges for transport then there are factories which are converted into dorms there are construction temporary quarters they call it ctqs which are on site most likely or any impermanent building under construction they can have so they have these uh, different categories temporary occupation license so most of them they talk about the process in uh, you have each contractor has to uh, undertake if that is there in the ministry of manpower for each one of them how do you go about getting a license uh, they have also mentioned interestingly uh, i think they have updated because of covid two months or few months back they had 20 people per room uh, because of covid quickly the government has intervened and said that uh, there should not be more than 10 people but if it is a hdb uh, which is a housing development board you uh, uh, flats um, uh, you have to have if it is anything other than a dormitory it should be around six workers so singapore or has a minimum double space per person because of covid not more than 10 per room this is very latest um india uh, so we are still though the new laws have come about october 2020 um bocw is still uh, the one to refer to for living conditions as far as we understand and there is hardly uh, any information about area per person air volume per person ventilation percentage and so on there is hardly any information uh, uae brought about a build safe document this was a few years back and that set the stage for malaysia to follow also 
um, like as I uh, said, there is three square meter per person, maximum of 10 people, minimum room height is 2.1, uh, lockable cupboard that they have mentioned. Uh, and they have banned um, anything to do with servicing, like cooking or washing inside the rooms. This is inside the living space. Uh, when we consider light, ventilation and space, uh, most of them have mentioned adequate light. In countries which are trop uh, tropical regions like Singapore and Malaysia, which are really hot and which runs a lot on AC or aircon as they call it, they have mentioned if there is no adequate natural light, we have to go in for artificial or mechanical ventilation. This is the same case in UAE also. If you don't have any uh, natural light, then go for But nowhere is it mentioned what is the percentage, almost what is the percentage of, uh, um, you know, uh, except in the uh, EBRD, IFC, they have mentioned 5 to 10 percent should be the ventilation area, 5 to 10 percent of the floor area, which is our rules for our housing also, but it's not mentioned for the workers in, in India. So all of them, they have mentioned, uh, like I said, about uh, adequate light ventilation, but there is no guideline in our BOC in India for any of this. UAE mentions area should be well lit, uh, suitable ventilation again. And uh, uh, here they have mentioned that it should not be a centralized light point for people, that they should have the uh, freedom to switch on and switch off. Uh, this is specified in the guidelines. So um, if you take cooking space again, they have mentioned, uh, we can go through this in detail. I will just run salient points. How much area per person for a canteen? Like it ranges from one to 1.5 square meter per person. Um, that it should be away from sleeping areas. That there should be sufficient supply of clean uh, drinking water. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, if there is a common area, Singapore has more specific latest laws specify one cook stove for every five bed spaces, two stoves uh, for designated use by 10 occupants from the same room. All this is more latest which they have brought in uh, in Singapore. And how many dining seats per person and how much of maximum dining and then you uh, decentralize dining area all because of COVID all this has come up. Uh, I, I understand that. Uh, in UAE, um, they have mentioned that it should be a centralized kitchen, not uh, this thing, and the kitchen must be kept clean, pest control, all this. Many of them have mentioned about uh, what are the materials to use, which we have not included in this presentation. You know, it should be cleanable flooring materials or tiles, walls, and so on. They have mentioned that, uh, all of them. Uh, in India, they have mentioned more to do uh, that canteen for the use of workers, but it's so worded that we understand it is more for the site rather for than the uh, residential um, uh, residence is part of it. So they have mentioned drinking water in suitable spaces, uh, portable water, but um, there has been no mention of uh, what is the area per person, what is how the dining should be. Nothing, nothing is mentioned. Um, if we come to uh, uh, sanitation. They have also uh, mentioned all these countries, all these areas, they have mentioned what is the standard, um, you know, one shower, one wash basin for how many people, it ranges six people in ILO to 10 people in UAE and 15 um, if it is in Malaysia, I think. Um, and what is the ratio of hand wash, one is to 30 people? What is the ventilation uh, area per bathroom, which is 0.2 square meters? So they have, these countries have, release these kind of laws, very, very specific. What should the materials be, anti-slip, hard washable? Many of them have mentioned more on materials and left, uh, like ventilation, they have left it like, uh, you know, adequate. So that's left to interpretation with what is adequate and so on. Um, in ILO standards, because it operates both in, um, uh, it's applicable for cold countries and hot countries also. So cold and hot water provision has been mentioned. Um, India, again, sufficient latrin and urinals, uh, and they have mentioned clean and sanitary ventilation, and they have mentioned that the toilets and baths should be whitewashed, and then it should be also segregated for men and women with separate uh, signages, that's the thing which is there on sanitation. 
So fire safety for the living conditions, uh, people have mentioned about fire alarms, extinguishers, workers should be trained in fire procedures. I think, uh, uh, I'm sure you will all be doing that. Um, for the working conditions, I don't know whether uh, workers are run through the safety guidelines for their living areas. That uh, you guys can share with me as we go along. I don't know actually. Um, yeah, so fire safety is something which people are taking much more seriously. I'm very happy to see that. Um, so these are the gui general guidelines, you know, fire resistant material, workers should be trained. These are the, upper, upper, uh, these are the uh, equipments which have to be provided uh, and so on. But what section to re uh, refer to, uh, uh, you know, whether um, ex except for uh, uh, EBRD or uh, IS IFC, they have mentioned local regulations should come in place. That, but the countries themselves have not very much specified that their fire regulations have to be referred to. Uh, but all of them mentioned free obstruction, signages, everything has been mentioned. So um, that is on the rules. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, I will take a bit more than what the stipulated time looks like. But let's just go through. This is more of pictures. Um, what is the uh, reality? Uh, so we will deep dive into a few places. Uh, our favorite uh, for this presentation is Malaysia. So in Malaysia, uh, the, uh, uh, the government rallied uh, a few years back because they were all, there was a bit of a hue and cry and a lot of media coverage on the worker conditions and that they were referring to a law which is 1990s and uh, it was across, uh, uh, you know, they have a lot of plantation workers and all that. It was not very specific to construction workers. So the industry came up to the government, there was a lot of interaction with the government and the industry and then they they urged when when things became like a, a, a talked about in the media the industry people said please release guidelines for us so the construction industry development board which is the agency of the government uh, with input from the construction industry uh, they came up with the law which is as recent for living conditions which is as recent as 2018 very good uh, document they have come up with uh, and a lot of inputs they have referred to like I said from the UAE document and uh, during the course of this research for this particular uh, session with you all I realized that it has been updated uh, in late 2019 uh, for COVID also. So Malaysia, this Kongsi seems to be a Chinese origin uh, it's also used for a mafia but it is uh, more um, uh, more to do with uh, uh, housing. So the Malaysian Kongsi, they call it, it's uh, for construction workers. Um, these are usually, uh, you know, ramshackle structures like a slums, uh, but the security guard <laughs> for these kind of areas is very tight. Um, and this is a shared space by men, women and all that. Such so three construction uh, workers usually stay in these kind of areas. Um, Okay, so I have a small uh, two videos we have here uh, of two, three minutes each. Let's go through that. Can you all hear this? Um, could you hear the video? To hear, uh, yeah. yeah. No, I cannot hear the video. I can only see the video, but I cannot hear. Oh, one second. We'll just check it out. Same as system, right? Ah, no, we do. Hmm. 
we um i should stop my video is it so why isn't it playing huh Yeah, so um, then we will just go through. Uh, can you hear me all? I can hear you. Yeah, so um, see, yes. we will just because I, huh? sorry, I can hear you and see both. Yeah, uh, yeah, because uh, we tried the video for the first time. So, yeah, so then we'll just go through uh, what is the, uh, you know, some, some pictures from uh, on Pong C. Just a second, I seem to be stuck here. Sorry about this. Yeah, so we'll just go through. Uh, no, again, it's stuck. Uh, the center one. Yeah. So uh, we will just go through the some of the pictures of the Kong Sea. So this was uh, uh, on fire. They, uh, you know, some living quarters were burned down. And uh, yeah, but the interesting bit in Malaysia is that a lot of discussion is happening and there is a lot of political will. So people are all in the government uh, coming together and trying to uh, make amends uh, in a more conscious manner and trying to sort the problem out, uh, you know, and urging 
so the government is coming together with the industry and working with the NGOs in trying to uh, improve. Though the situation is very bad, um, the government. So there's a lot of news and awareness, and that the government is upping the ante and bringing in uh, rules like. Like Singapore, uh, they have brought in very latest laws saying that this is not working and there is a lot of uh, concrete, despite what the government has said about, uh, uh, you know, 2018 guidelines, that these are the reality. So a little more, once more, I'm going to risk putting a video and I hope you can. This is a three, three minute video again. I will just um, play that. This is the news with the government uh, from uh, the, their local news about. So um, then we will just have a very quick look at uh, living conditions in Singapore. Uh, these are the six divisions, like I told you. Um, this is the purpose-built dormitory, which are run by uh, some developers. Uh, all very latest because of uh, COVID, there is this kind of segregation between beds. Um, yeah, these are temporary dormitories. Uh, then uh, there are these housing development boards, but um, people, the citizens of Singapore don't accept whether it's Indian or Malaysia or uh, Singaporean, even Malaysia, China, China, these are uh, Bangladesh, especially. These are the immigrants. Uh, they are, there is absolutely no inclusion. And uh, so the only area is Geylang area or uh, Serangoon, some districts uh, which are a little, um, you know, red light areas where they are allowed to stay. Um, so this is the reality, despite what the government is uh, doing. But the government is now currently bringing in the overcrowding laws. Before that, it was not so.
So India, I think you will all be very familiar. UAE, again, what the law says and what is the reality. They promise me there will only be two people in the room, but they don't write us in the contract. Um, so this is uh, interesting. IKEA, this is, uh, uh, we were part of this project after the campus set. It's one of the best, I keep saying that, where we have not been involved in infrastructure. We conducted some activities, Sunday activities for the workers. Um, it's a zero waste site. They have an industrial washing machine, uh, uh, all that, uh, you know, uh, the STPs, uh, zero waste STP and all that. They are put in very good uh, uh, because the IKEA is very, very involved. They walk the site, the members of uh, the team from IKEA uh, walk the site twice a week. Whenever their management comes into Bangalore, uh, they ensure that they also walk the site. Um, uh, if there is any wet clothes inside the room, they find. So there is a lot of uh, procedures and involvement which IKEA does. IKEA standards say 3.8 square meter per person and not more than eight people. Uh, beds and a minimum of one meter between beds. And they're very, very particular about uh, no clothes being dried inside. So this is the Bangalore campus. We thought we would share some pictures with you. Canteens also they have. Uh, Bangalore site is zero wastage. So this is how the rooms are. Uh, this is how the toilets are. And Shapuji is doing an amazing job maintaining it also. They used recycled it from, uh, you know, the dining area from some, uh, all the materials from a different site. So this one is a really stunning dining area, actually. Very nice. We used to conduct our uh, yoga activities in this hall with, uh, with uh, you know, coconut trees and all that. See, this is uh, very beautiful. So these are some of the activities which we had conducted, greening and all that stuff. Huh? Yes, so that is an idea of the living conditions. Um, uh, yeah, I hope uh, you got uh, us, you know, uh, what is happening outside. I, uh, I'm, I'm sure some of you will be quite aware of it. Um, so I will open it up for a discussion now. Would you have any questions on this or anything else? If we don't have the answers, we will definitely find them out for you. I will just now uh, stop sharing this presentation and open it up for discussion. Yeah. Vishal, um, uh, are you tracking the chats? Yes, ma'am. Yes, we are. Yeah. 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 Uh, Akila Abhati Vadi. Oh, Oops. <laughs> Sorry. Huh? Sorry. Yes. Uh, Akila Abhati this side. Uh, no. If you know, if you, if there are only two things which we could improve in a worker's conditions, or give mm -hmm. them, what according to you would be the two most important things? Um, oh, you're putting me in a spot, but definitely I would say uh, overcrowding because it directly leads to um, uh, aggression and fights and all that. So uh, I would say tackle overcrowding uh, first as a minimum condition, then bring in some amount of living area per person per room. So I would then tackle the area per person. Number of people per room and the area per room is what I would first tackle. But then you are uh, tying my hands because I want to say materials. <laughs> I want to say higher plant, more ventilation, uh, all that, yeah. But these are the two. If you ask me two, I would say don't put so many men in the room. You will immediately uh, 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 address the aggression issues. Interestingly, we have asked Aikya Shapurji. Uh, last week, I had a meeting with them. I wanted them to uh, tell me uh, a comparison of the number of fights in IKEA versus their other projects. So they said they will try and track track their data and give it to me. So I hope I will be able to share with you sometimes. So overcrowding and area per person. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, number of people. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. 
you made me think <laughs> yeah i will think some more yeah um anyone else so um shall we uh, anybody else team go ahead put forth your points uh, okay so what we can do uh, sorry no no i just you know ask uh -huh. the people to you know uh, talk about their uh, issues or put in their yeah. points also um uh, okay so while you're all thinking about it what we can do is ask uh, sugeshwar to share his uh, experiences because he um, took the leadership and uh, did the workshop for the workers so if we can request uh, is he there uh, yeah he's there i see him uh, can we request you to share some of your experiences uh, sugeshwar we can it would be nice for all of us to Hello, Mr. Sugesh. Go ahead. Uh, hi, Al. Good afternoon. Hello. 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 Yes, we can hear you. I guess Sugeshwar is in construction site. He might have challenges on network. But Sugeshwar, I think you should try coming out of the site and you know speak to the team for about five minutes. Yeah, um, I believe uh, Nita had spoken to him and he was quite enthusiastic. Um, yes, he had a couple of points that he would like to talk about. Um, <clears throat> So then, uh, let us also uh, while we are waiting for him, yeah, he's just mentioned just a moment in the chat. So you can uh, ask us uh, or share more than ask. It's more like sharing your experiences on the living conditions. Um, if there is anything you know, you have any any minimum in any of your projects, have you follow uh, you know followed any minimum height with any of the contractors? minimum ventilation area uh, what is the specification of the wall uh, is there anything mentioned about temperature difference between outside and inside in terms of hot climate because these are all things which we mention in our guidelines actually so if it's a hot region there should be at least a 4 degree temperature difference between outside and inside uh, on the better side actually and so on akela uh, uh, we don't mention most of these things uh, probably uh, you know shiva sir can correct me also because whatever our current perspective with respect to safety is mostly with regards to whatever is happening within the purview of the site so that is an attitude which we are trying to change uh, surely but a lot of takeaways from your presentations and i have noted down i have noted down you know one important thing what you had on the last slide uh, last slide uh, the thing which you talk about human dignity that everybody is a human being and those two points overcrowding in area per person yeah that's a one major things which i am these are the few takeaways which i am going to take from this if you can share uh, any project you have come across where some best practices have been done um, that would also be nice uh, you know something what which what i have done is uh, actually uh, uh, akila i what i have done is you know we share something called as you know hsc contract conditions to all the contractors when they when they are being selected in fact what i have done is you know in one of our general clauses i have made sure you know i put in some of these points like you know i am unable to remember now uh, what i have done is you know i have taken some uh, portions of uh, nbcs in terms of toilet arrangements 
like you know one for every 15 and uh, i've also made some uh, you know minimum uh, dimensions for housing uh, you know labor <coughs> facilities and all while uh, it is there in our contract conditions uh, i've done it some two years before i am able to remember those uh, dimensions maybe i know after this call i will have a look at it and get back to you but i have made some minimum basic uh, you know arrangements like you know washing facilities for the workers and uh, you know uh, what are all the facilities that are required to be given including crash and entertainment facilities and all these things which are already covered in our uh, condition which goes to every contractor in jll projects but implementation is something which is weak which needs to be you know uh, which take i mean construction works takes precedence uh, uh, you know because of the nature of the job we do and uh, while we do uh, you know implement these kind of things and we do also inspect at some uh, important sites but i agree that you know uh, construction works take precedence uh, and this will take a back seat yeah like i had spoken to you actually uh, we would also at the end of all this you know with your team we can share some generic guidelines which we have created uh, for the base build i have not done that for uh, interiors uh, which i have we have to study Mm, but we can we would be very happy to share with you you can take uh, we can always give 100 percent see if we don't mention then uh, like we have said, uh, there is a lot of gap between the letter and the spirit of the law but if we don't have a law then there is nothing uh, see one of the contractors was a very law abiding contractor he said i'm following bocw then there was nothing, no room for me to negotiate. Then we created a uh, presentation. We said the letter and the spirit of the law. So, uh, but then if, if at least we have it as a tender document, as a mandate and all that, um, then at least we have a chance to involve ourselves in the implementation. There is a long way to go. Yeah, but uh, we should try and bring in some guidelines and all that. But I, I can share uh, definitely that um, uh, once you make it a part of the this thing, there is always a gap, but still it's much, uh, much more better than uh, where we are currently when we bring in the requirements and tender guidelines and all that stuff. That uh, is a given. Yeah. All right. So, Sugeshwar, are you ready? Yeah. Hi. Good evening, God. Based on this, uh, we have conducted a training on Monday, uh, sorry, last Saturday. In that, we have covered all the cleaning areas and uh, workers' uh, issues and all. After completion of this training, we have done a lot of implemented sites, uh, like uh, cleaning also, cleaning like uh, workers' uh, welfare facilities, like, like that all. Vendor also improved a lot. Like we have uh, minimized the, uh, this one, uh, co uh, uh, see what it is. We have minimized uh, tobacco issues at that site and uh, worker toilet area issues. And uh, we are totally minimized. Instead of your uh, cleaning channel posters, we have provided some good posters and mirrors in the corners area so that to workers are avoiding this uh, uh, pisking all. We have controlled that one also. And uh, one more thing I have found this. Uh, when a uh, when a uh, workers are going out, uh, uh, when uh, moving out from the night na late, late night, some theft is happening. So that vendor also agreed to provide uh, some vehicles to worker movement and all. It's a very good uh, good uh, video scenario there. Along with we have provided the other videos also along uh, safety like that's it. Um, so where is this site and how many workers did you re are there totally uh, and how many from, did you reach out to? Around the two two fifty members at the uh, at site now. It is in uh, Hyderabad project. Ice client is ice. And uh, uh, so uh, you reached out to all the two fifty workers uh, once. Yeah. In a time we are Yeah. So. Uh, because these are all behavioral changes. Is it possible for, uh, like, you know, reaching out to them in a more systematic manner, each one of the topics? And obviously, you can't do every time, but is it something which you can train the contractors to just reach out or their CAMBOS to reach out yes, more regularly? Yes. Their own Some of the issues were already resulted in uh, site level. 
for uh, we don't know what they are uh, staying in locations and all okay because Haan. of this is the interior fit out project we are not providing any uh, labor colony at an our uh, site locations area they are uh, living in their own properties in site level and sub floor levels we are provided everything and yeah everybody can benefit from that is the best part worker welfare is not dependent on uh, base build or uh, uh, interiors it's just about workers it's amazing Thank you. very good yeah i would uh, request you i mean it's amazing you know, yeah for us it's like oh wow you started uh, taking initiative so early also um so thank you so much for that and i would request yeah um, you know the whole thing is in uh, consistency and systematic reaching out the first time when you do that will be a lot of feel good then there will be some uh, uh, pressures there will be some uh, you know uh, uh, challenges along the way very much aware but if you are able to make it somehow so that's that's why it's not about the one person so if you are able to reach out and train many more people that's in your hands there and slowly they will see the benefit uh, slowly surely they will see the benefit and then yeah yeah sure many benefits correct and uh, i will take this uh, opportunity to request every one of you also uh, out there uh, be be warriors reach out and give us a feedback um, it doesn't take much time uh, um to ensure and you will see the benefits happening where your main uh, main job is which is on timelines and quality uh, yeah uh, so do reach out do reach out because our entire thing is focused on uh, yeah you as flexible leaders and reaching out to workers outreach the outreach is very very important yeah. do do reach out yeah do reach out and if you feel that in some way there can be some tweak or we need more or uh, more posters or more uh, videos or different language um, or something like that do get back to us any constructive feedback um, we'll be happy to uh, incorporate do do let us know um, so uh, anybody else would you like to anybody's um, uh, already done uh, would you like to uh, tell us about it or you are planning to do some some commitments oh i want to do this week kind of a thing anybody else abhay uh unfortunately akila my site is on a close out stage so i don't have any workers right now left oh, okay. so few snag lists and other things is on the progress yeah, okay. but surely uh, what uh, where i am going to move out to another project it's going to be a huge residential project uh-huh. where let me see what i can implement yes, there from the beginning yeah, yeah. great great thanks what Thank about you, you javed Yeah, yeah. Good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Yeah, we have uh, uh, incorporated uh, that uh, video. Yeah, can uh-huh. you? Yeah. yeah, I have incorporated uh, that video into uh, this induction uh, program itself. Oh wow! Oh. Uh, and, uh, we have around eighteen to nineteen hundred uh, workers. Mm. So regularly we are conducting uh, sessions. Huh. So I hope. Uh, we will get Keep adding, uh, yeah 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 you can see some changes at site yeah that's that's really nice yeah yeah so how yeah, about vijay 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 are you there uh, uh, i sharmi sir also was planning uh, to conduct the call me yeah yeah i was just coming to him yeah hello come yeah, on No, actually, I have planned to conduct this session at my site in upcoming week. Uh, due to some problems, I was not able to conduct uh, this week. And uh, what I did is additionally, like I am having a very less strength at my site, uh, near about twenty to twenty-three workers only. Huh. So what I had did is uh, uh, at my previous site, uh, still JLL is working there. So uh, my safety colleague is there. so i have requested him to conduct the same sessions there also i have shared the links to of that so he will be hopefully he will also be conducting by next week great uh, dharmesh even one person um, is one life <laughs> do reach or don't worry about 23 uh, uh, do 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 um, one person also yeah matters yes yeah, sure sure, matters. sure 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 yeah. do reach out yeah. yeah thanks thanks a lot sanjeev
yeah good evening ma'am me and darvish are on same side in mm-hmm. hands when <laughs> yeah yeah definitely we are planning for session in next week yeah and we have a, and... look forward to uh, because of your uh, inputs uh, you guys uh, so we, sure ma'am we thought we would be reaching out health through yoga this week for the workers and we shall in the next okay. few minutes is and uh, after the case presentation actually he will uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, de addiction because that came as a request from you all so together with this hygiene you can also somewhere slot in uh, de addiction also because that uh, will need far more repetition hygiene yes also but uh, de addiction yes i think a number of uh, uh, repetitions to buy definitely ma'am yeah so sure, vikas ma'am. vikas Ah, uh, Terence. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, so uh, at present, I am uh, on. I am working on the two projects, and both are on pre-construction stage. So I am yet to, you know, reach site and conduct uh, any of the welfare uh, uh, things. But surely, whenever my site starts, I'll be having those conducted. Great. And if it is during the course of our uh, workshop itself. do give us a feedback whenever you do that's okay ha huh? sure ma'am that would sure, be ma'am. nice yeah yeah sure, great ma'am. great have i covered everybody who is there uh, part of uh, uh, your team oh. yeah correct no Hello. i have covered all yeah, jnl did i cover everybody did i miss anybody vijay of course uh, i don't know whether um, he is in the call or uh, so we can i just see him not here and vijay are you there right okay no problem uh, we will hope vijay also can i request that. mr abai to present uh, the case i'll share the screen Hello, Mr. Abai. Are you able to see the screen? Yeah, I'm able to see the screen. Uh, Anita, just one. I uh, just before that, I just wanted to show something. I I, I mean, it's a VR three sixty degree camera thing. If you allowed me to present that, uh, yeah. Will that? Can I share my screen for a minute? Uh, yes. Uh, I'll just uh, let me just make you the one second. Co-host, yeah. Okay. Um, Anjali, can you please meet Mr. Abai, the co-host? Pardon, Anita. Can I should not do that. Can you repeat? Um, Shweta, Shweta, Shweta will be there. Shweta, I made you the host. Okay, ma'am. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, uh, Akhila, ma'am, could you tell me again? Who I need uh, to make? Ah, uh, Mr. Abai, I need to be made the uh, host. Okay, okay, just a minute. So you can share the screen now. uh just let me know if my screen is visible to all you guys yeah yeah it is visible so uh, uh this was this is a, the case what i'm talking about is between the month of uh, august and september 2019 uh when the project was on this stage right now so uh, you can see in the background actually the labor camp is at a considerable distance somewhere close by itself so this is this is the stage itself 
and at that stage we had around a deployment of 75 to 80 per people here uh, in the project when it was going on in 2019 september 2019 uh, so uh, i am just chopping the sh screen share and what i am doing is uh, again what uh, the uh, presentation or the pdf what anita was trying to project i will share that again on my screen uh so uh can you see my screen yes sorry sir. Yeah. okay so i'll give a background to this we had recently started we had recently kicked off the site on 18th or 19th of august we started initial mobilization by end of august and uh, you know there was a lot of foundation and carpentry works which was going on and sometimes we we saw that you know you know the work is not starting on time or there are you know people are fighting between them you know and you know between those for the charger points for the industrial sockets so initially what we had done is we have laid the cables all around the periphery it was a small site it was around 6000 square meter land parcel and you know being a small land parcel we could you know have this industrial distribution boxes all over the site so that wherever and whenever we require the power we can take it and do the work there we found that uh, you know most of these workers are you know getting us so you know creating groups and standing near this distribution boxes every morning and uh, you know sometimes there was fights uh, you know mera mobile nikal ke kisne apna mobile lagaya mera mobile kahan chala gaya or uh, there is some people were fighting the supervisors or the engineers were scolding these laborers that guys uh, you know why are you removing that uh, saw cutters uh, plugs and putting in your mobiles so there was this three four activities which was you know creating disturbances at site so uh, you know under the guidance of my safety officer we went back and we went uh, to the you know project manager and trying to understand why this is happening we called you know open hall of i mean town hall for all the laborers to understand why this is happening why why you know everybody wants to you know ch charge their phones every morning at every plug socket is busy so uh, we got the feedback you know cup you know we got three major feedbacks actually first of them them that the, you know uh, uh, you know the mobile was the only source for them to have entertainment or you know to be a source of entertainment with them you know in the late evenings that was one thing second was it was a means to get in touch with their families you know so and it was now most of the workers are also carrying smartphones and other things so that is one of the things that they do video calls with their families and other things and you know be in touch with them and thirdly it was a it was a uh, i mean I, they use that mobile to have you know as a torch you know with a torch facility that they could use in the night itself so these were the three reasons why the mobile phones were very important to the workers so once we got that then we understood that uh, you know the light was being switched off you know the diesel the diesel generators were switched off every like 7:30 in the evening you know sometimes it was 7:15 sometimes it was 7:30 workers complained that you know if there is going to be a work late in the night the dg is still on and they get the power and when the worker is not there at site the you know dgzs are switched off abruptly so considering that we went to the contractor uh, it was ratilal bhagwandas construction company rbcc we had a detailed discussion with their project manager and uh, you know the project manager had his own set of apprehensions why this activity was being done one was being that you know whenever wherever they you know switched on the dg dgzs for more time it was found that the workers were creating groups and creating nuisances like uh, you know one of them was gambling and second was being the drinking so they were that they should, they updated us with their challenges and we came way out with it by appointment of a cam boss so we we actually instead of cam calling him a cam boss we wanted to give him uh, it should be i what we say um, he should feel that guy should be felt important who is looking after it 
so we called him camp superintendent so it gave him a sense of position and power and it was his responsibility to manage the camp at night so he is one of our supervisors who would stay in the camp itself now what happened it uh, the power first thing the power was given till 8:30 9 o'clock in the late evenings and so that you know all the mobile charging cooking and other activities was done act you know appropriate pace and you know in a proper manner secondly having this camp superintendent at the camp itself improved the living conditions to some extent like you know uh, what we say the cleanliness of that camp improved to some extent and secondly the water which was coming you know the water the another problem which they didn't tell me but have the presence of this camp boss uh, or camp superintendent what the frequency and uh, requirement or the availability of water also they they it became more prominent because what happened now workers had somebody to go uh, go to share him with uh, share them their problems and he could take action on them so overall uh, that was the benefit somehow it started with just a problem of having a you know the grouping on around the sockets and the power sockets and later on it had a gradual incremental effect on the overall welfare of the workers can you go down ha huh, what worked uh, this is um, uh, i this is a this is a kutti thesis in itself you know actually this is one of uh, where uh, it's uh, this is what is a systems approach abhay amazing this case when when you ma'am uh, uh, to be very honest uh, it was never intentional but yeah, it did, it it did manage to have a positive impact yeah no Me that is what i'm saying just one involvement for our own sake to solve the problem no but you guys have gone in deeper and you are address so that you know site work improves but then the insights which you get it's uh, all this and address one leads to another one leads to that's what we are saying all these are very interlinked actually so this is an amazing case actually and i uh, i have uh, yeah no value add except to say that um, from our experience yes uh, um, this is amazing that camp supervisor is something uh, is uh, supervisor is more dignified than the camp boss uh, superintendent or something like that is a very good term so i think that is one big take home for us the other one give here is that yeah we realize uh, uh, we have uh, from our experience that a camp uh, supervisor or a superintendent is very uh, needed and we have also realized that if he is not given a uh task for the day and task for a week and task uh, you know regularly what you can do daily what you can do weekly what you can do monthly um his potential is not uh, extracted and secondly we have even did a, come up with a jd for a camp otherwise you just take one chotta person and put him um you know who who cannot read or write or sometimes he's a sight guy who is pulled away uh, for sometimes it's even a security guy so if somebody is from a community background we realize they can interact with the workers the benefits are far more like you say they go and speak to him and all that stuff so in our projects we also train uh, uh, what uh, these people can do and they can work wonders actually and even number of workers like you know beyond uh, 800 or 900 if you put one person we had a case where for 2000 people we had only one person uh, he couldn't do much um, so uh, there are yeah that's it's a very important role actually for managing workers it can be a powerful one also made it a powerful one. amazing case actually would anybody uh, from you all be able to share or give any inputs to abhay from your experience on something similar uh, this is like thoroughly analyzed like you say and you were frank enough to say it was not your intention but these are all uh, you know uh, the the pluses sometimes when you go deep to solve some problem which is affecting us yeah unintended uh, pluses but very deeply done now by yeah others would you want to add inputs because i think it was such a solid way of approaching the case it's a case study itself rather uh, but any inputs from you all or any insights on this or any value additions please do share
okay uh, um, thank you so much uh, mr abai um, so now we'll move on to the toolkit uh, so this time we'll be talking about tobacco de addiction and vishal will be presenting going through the presentation for you guys to uh, do it with laborers Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure again to be introducing uh, uh, the didactic on tobacco addiction. Uh, give me a minute while I share my screen. Uh, are you guys able to see my screen? Yes, it's visible. Uh, so we're talking about um, what are the in this in this module we'll be talking about what are the effects of tobacco and um, how uh, what are the symptoms of addiction and what how can one person be de addicted. Uh, and we have also set in the end an action plan for you guys to uh, for the workshop that you will be conducting with the workers. So the workshop agenda remains similar to the last one that I introduced. We'll be going through the uh, introduction and the serenity prayer, then the affirmation, then there will be an ice breaking activity, then uh, the entire crux of the uh, module that is the awareness, and then we would prefer you to take a break. And then in the end, we'll have a few Excel sheets where uh, the ac action plans and how the de-addiction program can be conducted uh, will be taken forward. Uh, the objectives are as follows. You will become aware of, I mean, the workers will become aware of uh, what the patterns of using tobacco are. They will understand what the meaning of addiction is. Uh, some might not even be aware that they're addicted to a certain thing. Then they will learn how to self-motivate to, uh, towards a path of de-addiction. Uh, they will acquire, uh, in, usually what happens is when such um, uh, addictive substances are withdrawn from a person's life, they go through a lot of uh, withdrawal symptoms. Uh, they will learn how to manage the stress that comes along with withdrawal symptoms. Uh, they will, uh, you along with uh, the workers will plan to overcome the tobacco use. Um, how relapse can happen and what are the risks of it, we'll learn about that too. Um, what happens if a, risk, a relapse happens and how to overcome a relapse. Um, move from intention to action, live your plan and become tobacco free. These are the few uh, uh, objectives of the program. Uh, the serenity prayer, uh, basically, like we introduced last time, uh, for those who haven't been in this session, uh, it's a prayer that um, that tells all the workers that um, there are a few things in our control and we can change them. Uh, there are a few things that are beyond our control. Um, and it is a prayer to uh, acknowledge that these things are beyond our uh, control and it is basically a prayer that asks for overall strength. Uh, affirmations are basically um, to point out to a few things, a few good things that um, that the uh, construction worker will have in their life. For example, the family and friends, uh, the job that they have, and the food on their plate to acknowledge a few good things in their life. Um, so he, here are a few ice breaking activities, uh, questions that can be thrown out to um, uh, the construction workers in order to sort of uh, bridge the gap between the workshop conductor and uh, the participant. Uh, we could throw out a few questions that would say, why do you smoke? And then they will come up with a few answers. And then, and then these answers can develop into new questions. And it's basically to uh, interact, to, uh, to invoke an interaction between uh, the conductor and the participator. Mm, then this is a game where like you say, you state three statements and say one of them is false, which one is that? Um, for example, here, uh, for some cancer patients, quitting smoking can decrease the risk of death. That is, um, that is the truth and there is, there is one lie in, in these three statements. Um, then we go into the crux of the program. We say, what are the facts of 
tobacco how much do they spend how much indians use tobaccos how many people die because of tobacco usage and things like that then we move on to how uh, cigarettes um, cigarettes and cigarettes have 200 known chemical compounds basically we are stating numbers straight out numbers to the workers so that uh, it sort of has an impact on the workers uh, 4000 chemical compounds 200 known poisons that itself will set them aback um these are a few uh, th this is a slide which tells people that these are the kind of uh, these substances have tobacco in them then we discuss about what addiction is what what are the symptoms of tobacco dependence for example there is a strong desire to use tobacco there is difficulty in controlling its use persistence in uh, tobacco despite harmful consequences sometimes the worker is going through the negative effects of tobacco but still they continue using it and this is one symptom of tobacco um tobacco usage is given higher priority than everything else in their life uh, these are the few symptoms of um symptoms to tell that a construction worker is addicted to tobacco um these are a few uh this is a sketch that shows what effect nicotine has on your brain uh first nicotine is when it's drawn into lungs it's delivered to the brain and then the brain has a buzz and then nicotine levels drop creating more cravings once the nicotine level in the brain drops the brain craves more and more nicotine and that's when like when a human knows that this sort of nicotine can be obtained from a cigarette there is a craving for a cigarette uh this is a slide that will tell people uh, that will tell our workers that what sort of chemicals are in in a cigarette for example there there is the chemical that is found in lighter fluid cat batteries poison barbecue lighter industrial solvent insecticide toilet cleaner paint even even rocket fuel and carbon monoxide and such chemicals when you tell them that are present in a cigarette they sort of we hope that they will be taken aback by the kind of chemicals that are present in a cigarette and this that would create an impact on their addiction this is the de addiction plan uh this is a video that you can play for them it's a long uh video i will uh, skip this but it's attached in the ppt and you guys can play it when the workshops happening so this is why not smoke it's basically telling if you quit smoking at 30 years you get all your 10 years back but whereas if you skip i mean quit smoking at 60 years you get only 4 out of the 10 years that you lost back um this is a this is a, a chart that shows what happens if you quit smoking after 20 minutes of quitting after 8 days after 2 days after 1 month and eventually after 10 years so if one were to explain these benefits to the workers i'm sure it would drive them on the path to the addiction this is another similar uh, a uh, slide which tells you what happens what are the benefits after quitting smoking these are a few pictures to just create an impact uh sometimes when the addiction uh, program begins workers tend to sort of give reason saying uh, my life is stressful i'm away from my family my grandfather smoked two packs a day and she lived to be 102 and things like that so these sort of uh, statements can be tackled while the addiction program is uh, in progress these are a few symptoms when the addiction program just begins it's called quitter's flu a few um, symptoms of quitter's flu are headache fatigue irritability insomnia and a sore throat these are the similar i mean uh, more on the quitter's flu and its symptoms the, the worker tends to have a depressed mood and they have insomnia irritability craving more and more of nicotine therefore tobacco um their heart rate drops and hence their blood pressure they might gain weight or they might increase in appetite so these are a few uh, uh questions that you could ask and you could um in in calculate in the workers to say that um how how this is the information that you uh, the the construction camp boss or anybody else can collect in order to prevent the uh, excessive use of tobacco this is the action plan um step 1 is to commit to quit 
um, to get the worker to commit to quit itself would be a task. And once that task is complete, I believe 50% of the task is being accomplished. Um, writing down your quitting plan, we will help um, with this. We have a plan set out. Uh, step three is to connect uh, the workers to other workers who are willing to quit. quit. And then uh, it, it sort of becomes our responsibility to do a weekly check. And whenever there's progress, one needs to celebrate that progress, saying if they've reduced the number of cigarettes from uh, five packs a week to two packs a week, that itself is a progress, and that progress needs to be celebrated. So um, this is a chart where you, uh, we're all, we've also shared an Excel sheet in the same folder. Uh, this will be an Excel sheet that you guys can print out, and it will be uh, like a database for you to collect information of people, of the laborers that want to quit in order to keep a track and to assist um, in, the, in the de addiction plan. This is for the individual workers where they can keep a track of when they smoke and how much they've reduced. For example, this will be the first row will be for day one, this day two will be in the second row. So for example, if they wake up and smoke within the 30 minutes of waking up on the first day and they don't on the second day, that itself is progress. So this is a progress checking uh, chart. For example, how many I smoke now and what the plan is. This is, uh, this is a chart that will set their goal. So when you connect um, people with others, you, you can also have a database of uh, who all you've connected. So each group can have, have up to four people. So it's like a self-help group. These are the health benefits of smoking. Again, this can be printed out and put uh, in, in certain prominent places on the site and in the construction labor camp. So I hope uh, we will uh, we will conduct workshops with regard to uh, tobacco de addiction. And I hope to see uh, a lot of feedback and from, from the trainer team and from the uh, workers team. Um, wishing you all the best for this workshop. Uh, thank you, thank you for your time. Okay, I think- uh, Bring the link with you all uh, for the Google Drive on the group um, uh, so that you can access all the videos, uh, the worksheets, the presentations, the posters, Posters and videos are something that you can immediately uh, do. Posters can be printed out. Uh, most of them are in Hindi. I think a couple of them are in English. So you can use both of them to uh, put wherever applicable, like dining areas, uh, your own, uh, I mean, the workers' dorms, kitchen, etc. cetera. Um, so it, it, you know, makes them, it, it creates an impact. And of course, video like uh, Mr. Sugeshwar has conducted training on hygiene, probably you can also, um, uh, you know, mobilize workers and play. And these are all very uh, short videos um, and they don't preach. It's uh, more to make them aware. Uh, they're very interesting, very interactive. Um, we'll be sharing the link with you all uh, soon. Yeah. So, um, any questions on this? I uh, we shall. Um, though I say so myself, I'm seeing this uh, first time because we have a, a much larger, we um, larger presentation of 80 slides. Very well done, Vishal. Yeah. Just just the right amount of information. If anybody wants a much bigger presentation, do ask us. We have a presentation. This is uh, very beautiful. So, yeah, though I say so myself, sorry about that. Uh, but you guys can give in your inputs. Anybody wants to, um, you can before we wind up the program for the day. Uh, we request you all to give us a feedback. We'll be posting the link in the chat box. Kindly give you, it, it takes less than two minutes. We request you all to please uh, give the feedback. Uh. So um, thank you guys uh, for joining us on the Saturday and uh, sitting us on our weekend. Um, and I would request you all to encourage the rest of your colleagues also to join in. Um, a lot of efforts has uh, gone in uh, from Shiva personally, I would say. 
uh, for towards this program. Um, so do make it a, a much more involved uh, thing. And for the, those of you who are here, here and you continue to be here for the third session also, thank you so much. And for reaching out, uh, one we say in Tamil, one more border for Sugeshwar. <laughs> So that is like akin to uh, three cheers and looking forward to all of you also to reach out more and more. So uh, the, in a couple of weeks time, we will meet again with the overcrowding and Anita will start facilitating from this session. onwards. I will be there part of it. Uh, so looking forward to that session two weeks down the line. Thank you so much um, for coming and attending and importantly participating. Do give your feedback because that is something which is a requirement of ECHO. And this is a true survey. It won't take more than a couple of minutes from your end. Thanks, guys. Have a great Sunday um, and a great week ahead. Thank you.